All right, here we got something a little bit different. It's a Singer 99, made in 1926. I've got it set up with a hand crank on this side and a pretty nice little machine. If I take a piece of typing paper and put it in front of the machine, except for the crank area, we can pretty much make the machine disappear so it's not very big. Nice thing about this machine is it's really easy to use. It's got the bobbin winder right here on the front. This is your stitch length. Screw this in or out. You can actually still get your hand in here to un unloosen to loosen this so your this will spin freely when you're winding a bobbin and then you can lock the hand wheel back down. This is a top loading machine. Uses a class 66 bobbin and it's got the little knurled button here when you want to pop your bobbin out. You just press that down it'll come right out. I've made up this, I got picked up some reclaimed wood and made up this little stand for the machine to sit on. It's got the scroll plate on the side and all the way around the decals are looking pretty good considering soon this will be a 100 year old machine. And uh, yeah, this just tips up. See if I can do it with one hand. You pull a little pin to lock that in. When you run the machine, you're cranking away from you. That makes the hand wheel spin towards you. So I'll just demonstrate the machine running. Now this, uh, it's 1926, but it still uses a regular needle that you can get at Joanne Fabrics or anywhere. And it's the same needle any domestic sewing machine uses that's flat on one side. It's kind of nice. It's got the side mounting foot instead of the rear, so any of your short shank singer feet will fit right on here. And this is... Uh, Part of a pant leg so it's two layers of heavy denim and then I'll sh also show it running through these heavier areas and you just put the foot down and start cranking turns over super easy You will feel a little resistance when you go through the heavier part, but it doesn't have a problem. And this is your stitch length right here. I've got it all the way out right now. I had it all the way in. No wonder I couldn't get it. Oh, that, and then it'll make a, and it'll make a really tiny stitch. Put it back in here. I'm not gonna tighten it. There we go. Alright. And when you want to wind.
find your bobbin over here. Let me make sure that's in frame. Okay, when you want to move your bobbin over, wind your bobbin over here, you would just take it out, put the bobbin on here. There is a little hole in the bobbin. You'll have to line that up with the little pin. Now you can loosen the hand wheel with this locking nut on the side. Just clip that in and then just turn it away from you again. And that way the mechanism is turned off. But as you can see, you'd be winding your bobbin over here. And to do that, you would just come around this spool pin, go through this wire or thread guide. There's another little thread guide right here you go through, and through this little fork, and that guides the thread back and forth on the bobbin while it's loading. And then when the bobbin's full, it'll pop away. And you can just tighten the locking nut back down. And start sewing. I'm just running a like a tech 40 thread, just a standard sewing thread. I'm just running it off a large spool and then draping it over the spool pin here. Alright, this gets kind of addictive for some reason, so uh, I think that's it.